So we're going to walk you through um, compost tea extract. And we, we went through, or my sister Darcy went through all the Elaine Ingram classes, which she's like the, the queen of soil biology, right? Learned how to use the microscope, identify all these bugs under the soil, uh, in the soil. She taught us good enough how to use the microscope to tell if this compost tea that we're making extract is good or bad. We decided to go with compost extract because it has a longer shelf life. If you made a tea, you would put the biology in a tank, a smaller amount, bubble it, ramp up the biology so that you can get a whole bunch of concentrated biology and you'd spray that out really quickly. When we're seeding, that doesn't work. We, it doesn't have a long enough shelf life to get it out fast enough with the drill. So we decided to go with the extract that allows us to make it a little ways ahead of time. We try to make it probably only 12 hours before it goes out through the drill at the most. Um, but still, we've checked it three or four days later and we're still not getting what you would call anaerobic conditions yet at that point with this extract. But we're taking this compost, putting it down through the drill instead of fertilizer. So we quit putting any starter fertilizer, whether it is phosphorus or nitrogen down with the seed. We are still using some nitrogen on top with some humic acid and some sulfur, uh, just as we're transitioning here, because if we don't, I think we could have kind of a wreck, but we're not putting anything down in that seed zone that would inhibit the biology down. There. So this uh, video is gonna take you through this whole process. You'll see us sifting. We had to sift the compost because um, the stuff that we bought was unsifted. The reason for that was that they couldn't sift it fast enough for the quantity that we needed, which was fine. But it does create a little bit of extra labor, as you'll see. But it's not bad because we're only doing uh, 50 to 100 pounds per batch of it. So, point being, we went all over the internet searching for ways to do this. There wasn't really a lot of videos to show you how it gets done in the end on a commercial scale. We're into about 3,000 acres now that we've got seeded out, I think, of this. So we got a pretty good grasp of what we needed to do to make it go through the drill and uh, kind of how to refine this process to make it more quick. So we'll take you through the steps. So what we're doing here is we're screening the compost that we got. So when you get this stuff and it's unscreened, uh, normally we'd run through a commercial shaker sort of a setup and it would be screened down to let's say quarter or half inch or whatever. They would tell you the specs on that. This stuff they didn't have time to screen but it really fit what we needed for compost and I kind of like it on screen because there's enough material in there that it keeps it aerobic. Like there's sticks for the fungi to feed on and the such to right towel before we use it. So this is a screening process. You can just see us shovel that on there, kind of screen it off and then scoop it into buckets. And those buckets are going to go inside and then go into this extractor. So after we've sifted the compost or we just take it out of the pile, which hopefully has already been sifted, we end up with a product um, that looks like this, basically. So we've got some nice compost here from Dirt Rich Compost in Columbia Falls. Um, the thermal compost, similar to the way that we did our own, um, seems to have pretty good biology as far as diversity goes and um, really cool program where they collect waste from restaurants, throw that all into a compost pile and then ends up being a product we put in our field. So, so we've got the compost there. We're going to be shooting for about a pound an acre of compost with the biology that's in this stuff. We have a tank here that fills full of fresh water. Our water has a little bit of chlorination in it right now because it's a new pipeline. So we had to put some humic acid in with the water. That humic acid dechlorinates it, so it ties up chlorine and chloramine so that the water isn't killing the bugs. So it's going to come out of this tank, it's going to go through a sprinkler pump over there just to boost the pressure, and it's going to end up in this extractor here. And this extractor contains a filter, a big filter like this, that's going to go down inside this thing. I'm going to put the lid on here and all the compost is going to go inside the filter. The, the air is going to bubble up and extract the biology off of the compost and push it outside the filter and this is going to keep most of the solids in basically. So that filter, that's our first step as far as our filtration goes because that's pretty important as far as the drill nut plug. This is the Midwest uh, egg, I think it was, or Midwest biology extractor. Pretty cool outfit. Otherwise you'd have to hang bags in a tank to extract all this biology. So this speeds this up a bunch. So you see this lid's going to go on here and hold down against that filter. This outfit has a big three inch dump valve in the center on the bottom that's going to allow us to dump our waste out at the end which you guys will see. There's a self-contained air pump on here. 
There's also a float, and as this fills up, that float's gonna kick a water pump on that's gonna start pumping water out into our tank outside that's gonna go into the drill, right? So, so we're gonna take this biology, throw it in here with some water that was treated with humic, and then that water's gonna go out to that trailer, and it'll go out to the field and get injected through the drill. We'll go through um, some of the filtration stuff too. As far as not plugging the drill, there is a 30 mesh filter on this. It's gonna run outside, which you'll see when we do the outside stuff through an 80 mesh filter. That's a self cleaner, that I'll explain. And then as it comes out of that tank, we found out we need to filter it again with that 80 mesh screen just to catch. There's some sediment that falls out in this stuff that can be chunky. It catches those chunks and then it'll go into the drill into a tank which has a filter one more time. Now, is it ideal to filter it that many times biology-wise? Perhaps not, but we're still getting a pretty darn good sample out of the openers on the drill, even after we do all that filtration, and it solved us a whole bunch of headaches as far as plugs. So we'll get started on this. The first thing with this thing is we gotta turn the air pump on. You always turn the air on before the water because you don't want water getting down into the air chamber down below there. That's a good place for anaerobic stuff to happen, right? So. It's going to get kind of loud. I'm going to turn the air pump on. I'm going to turn on the water back there. Then we're going to start filling this tank. Then I'm going to start dumping compost in. put the number of gallons of water we want to make in this batch. With this, this is a 250 extractor, which means they're gonna do 250 gallons every half hour. I found out if you do about 300 gallons per batch, that works out about right for giving us time to clean it out at the end after we extract all the compost. Now we have water going into the extractor. You can see it bubbling out the top of it until it gets full enough that it quits making a mess. As soon as that gets about half full, I'm going to start dumping compost in there to start extracting this biology, and then I'll show you the next step. So as this, as this thing starts to fill up, you're going to see the float start to rise. When it gets about full, then it's going to kick up that float's going to kick a pump on, it's going to start pumping water out to our tender trailer outside. So when we're close to that point, that's when I start dumping compost in. And like we said, we do about a pound an acre, so for a 250 gallon batch at five gallons an acre, that's 50 acres. Two of these buckets is about 50 pounds of compost. So I dump one in now, I'm going to dump one more in when that gets down to about 150 gallons, and then we also added about an extra half a bucket in the last 100 gallons or so, just to up our biology a little bit. You can see this bubbling away. What it's doing is just bubbling that, mixing that compost in there, getting it in a liquid form, and then all the biology gets sucked out and pushed out of that filter. That's gonna to start to pump that float back down so this tank will be about half full and it'll sit there for the duration of this extraction. When we're done with this first 250 gallons, the waste product will go out the bottom of this into a wheelbarrow, which I'll show you. We'll dump that in a bucket and then we just go dump that on our trees or on our lawn because it still has a lot of good biology in it. So we're gonna run through this. This will be about a half an hour here. We'll finish this one step of this extraction up. I'll show you it dumping and then it just repeats one more time to make a 500 gallon batch, which is what we've been doing to keep it fresh. That basically goes right from that batch into the drill and gets shot on the ground. So here we are uh, filtering, right? So coming right out of that extractor is this hose here that pumps pumping that out into this big filter. 
Um, this was bought off of irrigationking.com. It's a self-cleaning filter, which means that if this gets plugged, or we know it's getting close to needing clean, all we have to do is open this dump valve on the bottom, and we turn this crank up and down, and as we crank this thing, there are jets inside there that are cleaning the screen on this filter. So we don't have to take that apart and wash that filter out, because we're doing a lot of gallons through there, and some of it's relatively coarse material. This saves a lot of time. We also found out now that we take this out to the field with us and filter it out of this thing back into the tender tank in the field. What happens in that tank after that sits a while is there's still sediment um, that passes through this 80 micron filter that ends up falling in the bottom of that tank. It actually forms a bit of a sludge and that sludge when it sloughs off in there can, can slug the filter on the drill. So this just catches any slugs that come through there and lets it kind of dissolve before it has to hit the drill tank. I'll show you a sample of the product as it's coming out of here too. Just a second, let me get a cut. So. so here's a sample of that extract. Um, you can see pretty much chocolate milk type color a lot of dense biology in there. When we get done with this, we would take this in, just put one drop under the microscope, and we would hope in that one drop we would find a bunch of, or some higher level life forms like nematodes uh, and uh, protozoa and amoeba. We were finding quite a lot in our home mace comp compost. This compost pile that we got from uh, Columbia Falls has sat outside quite a while now. We kept it wet enough that it should have stayed pretty diverse, but it got so cold there for three weeks that we're starting to lose some of our higher level stuff still really diverse and you can see the amount of humic and a bunch of other nutrient stuff that you're getting in there along with biology so that sample should have a pretty good dark brown color at least from what i understand uh, dark to lightish brown and so you can see kind of what we have going on here the one other thing cool thing is alongside the compost you can also add in other products into that compost extractor um, p inoculant which we didn't try this year but we'll try next year we are trying some mycorrhizal fungi inoculant, which I'll show you here. This is a VAM, which is a bio egg product. It has one, two, three, four, five, seven different mycorrhizal fungi species in here. What's really cool is after we do this extraction, when we throw this VAM in there, we will see quite a few mycorrhizal fungi spores just on the one slide. So that's going right with the seed. Mycorrhizal fungi needs to be right next to the roots as the, the plant starts growing. It attaches and starts growing as well. So we're hoping that this is a good way to ramp up some of the fungal stuff we're missing in the soil. Also, the compost, I should have explained, is at least as fungal heavy as we could find around here. Next year, we're going to try doing some uh, Johnson Sioux bioreactor stuff and maybe getting some worm castings and mixing those in to get more of a fungal component because that's what we really need in our soils. So here we finished, or at the end of our first batch. This is the end of the first 250 gallons. I'm gonna use this stick to kind of stir that stuff that's in there, because there is rocks and stuff in this compost. So we need a little help getting it stirred up. What we found is that you're better to start dumping that big valve um, before the water supply shuts off so that we keep the tank pretty full and bubbling still. And then as the water comes in, it helps wash that out for us as well. At the beginning, we were letting the water shut off first on the gallon counter and then try and stir it. By the time you got it kind of broke loose and stirred out of there, the water would drain out and it made it more challenging. So I'm gonna go up there, I'm gonna pop that valve, you're gonna see it come down into this wheelbarrow and then we'll take it and throw it the skid steer and put it on the freezer. out on our trees we just dump that out in our skid steer bucket. Uh, we bought this little wheelbarrow in Home Depot and uh, it really seems to serve the purpose well for what we need. It holds just about exactly the right amount for that extractor. 
So we'll dump that out. We would just start all over now with a whole nother 250 gallon batch. So you can see our tank is just about getting full, so we're almost done with this batch. Uh, we'll actually let this settle in this tank for a while and then open the valve in the bottom and dump out as much of the solids as we can get out to settle. Because all of your problems with this through your drill are going to come from the solids that settle out. There's not a lot. We probably open that valve there for. I don't know, maybe 15, 20 seconds, and then the water will start running more normal colored for the extract. And that gets some of that solid flushed out of there. Um, like I talked about later, I think too, I, I always think that if I have time at least to go back where we have the fire hose on the fire truck and hose that out too, so we can get all the solids out the bottom. And then, of course, when we're done with this, at least once a day, we try and take this into where our microscope is at, which that'll be another video for you guys. And we check this stuff under the scope to make sure that the biology is viable, viable that there's nothing bad anaerobic in there, and that we still have the right amount of counts. Because this stuff has changed a lot just over the month that we've had this compost pile sitting outside. So you really want to keep an eye on the biology. If you're going to do this, make sure you learn how to use a microscope and learn how to do compost correctly, because the last thing you want to do is be putting out bad stuff onto your soil. So that's basically the extent of that. So we've got our spent compost now in the skid steer bucket. You can see there's mostly solids with some liquid that'll go get dumped on our trees or on our lawn. And the tank we were filling will go out to the field here in a couple of hours and go into the drill. And when we get onto the drill part, I will make another video showing you everything we learned with that setup. Because that, that's probably the most challenging part is getting past uh, orifices or metering tubes, plugging, um, the type of stainless steel tubes we used to drop it into the ground and the trouble we had with rocks. We'll go through all that stuff in another, another video, but I wanted to take you through this whole extraction process anyways with this extractor before I, we kind of forgot some of the things we learned here. That big takeaway, that big filter, probably one of the better things you could spend money on. Now make sure you rinse out your tender tank because there's a lot of sediment that settles in the bottom of that. That could be an anaerobic thing, which we just rinse that out with the fire hose when I'll dump this out. And then at the end of the night, we pull that filter out, rinse it off after we've done several batches, uh, let it dry, and then just start all over again in the morning. And that little stainless steel tank that's doing the extracting, it's super easy to rinse out. So if you have any questions, you can always feel free to send me an email or whatever. Thanks. This is Corey uh, with KW Insurance and Happy Steer Ranch.